welcome to episode 82 of Piv's NXT Point of View Podcast. My name is Bill Pivots. So this week, we got the second annual Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic underway. Uh, the bracket was revealed last week, and I have it up right here. You have TM61 versus Tino Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. Team Aries, Austin Aries and a mystery partner against Tucker Knight and I think that, I don't know who that is, but Bog- Bogovich, I think that's the name. Also, Hideo Tami and Kota Ibushi versus Lince Dorado and Ali. I'm not too sure who that is either. Uh, Ty Dillinger and Bobby Roode versus Sanity. You have the Authors of Pain versus Bollywood Boys. That match took place on this episode. And the winner of that will face the winner of No Way Jose Riswan against Tony Nese and Drew Gulak. The Revival versus Andrade Cien Amos and Cedric Alexander also took place tonight. The winner of that will face Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus... Ho Ho Loon and Bin Wang. So the show kicked off with a quick highlight of the end of last year's finals with Samoa Joe and Finn Balor winning it and Regal's announcement, William Regal's announcement of this year's tournament. So the show kicked off with the Bollywood Boys against the Authors of Pain. During the entrance of the Bollywood Boys, they showed the whitest people ever doing their dance. It was, they look so awkward and it's just another reason why white people can't dance. And I kind of compared them to, not as skill-wise or talent, but just their entrance with the camera rolling, kind of like the Indian version of the Hollywood Blondes. Uh, but this match itself didn't last long. Uh, Harv Sira slapped Rizar multiple times. Arthur's Pain just beat the crap out of him. There's a small please don't die chant. Uh, Gurv Sierra came in. He was clotheslined right away. Uh, they hit some knee strikes and a double gut buster. They finished with a corner splash and their uh, clothesline leg sweep combo to get the win. Yeah, pretty much what I expected. The Bollywood boys got some offense in, but obviously the offense of pain are just going to destroy them, and that's pretty much the formula for most of their matches. We got a final Dan Matha video. He debuted later in the show, but probably not to what he was expecting. Second match was Rich Swan versus Patrick Clark. As soon as I heard Rich Swan's music, I kind of thought it was their uh, tag team match in the Classic, but it was just a singles match. Patrick Clark had a little bit of a change of attire. He had a uh, sequence... Um, headband going on instead of his patriotic tights. During the match, Swan flipped over Clark, landed a nice drop kick off the ropes. Patrick Clark was in control for a little bit, but Swan made his comeback with a uh, kick to the gut and a uh, jumping back kick to his jaw. He then went with a uh, handspring moonsault. Interesting match. Uh, Rich Swan is really over with the crowd. Very entertaining. I could see him as a successful mid-card act. Maybe upper mid-card, kind of like Tyler Breeze. Um, very entertaining. Uh, Patrick Clark, Looked like a buff version of TNA's Orlando Jordan. That's the best I got for you. We got a little recap of the Cedric Alexander Andrade Almas match from two weeks ago. It kind of led to a preview um, for the tag match between them and the Revival. They then showed highlights of the, if there are any highlights, of the Liv Morgan Oscar match from last week. Led into that, Liv Morgan was getting her shoulder examined. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce uh, walked in, kind of laughed at her, and walked away. Third match was Peyton Royce with Billy Kay at her side versus Danielle Camella. Not Carmella, not Kamala, Camella. And this is just a just shows just how bad the women's division has gotten. Uh, I can care less at this point. Um, I hate to say that because the women's division was probably the best thing on NXT for the longest time. But I was on my phone for most of the match. Uh, I just saw that Royce locked her in a modified tarantula between the ropes. And that she landed a running knee and Fisherman suplex to get the win. I got nothing else to say. It's just a big drop off when you call up some pretty talented women all at once. Kind of leaves the division in uh, in shambles. After the match, Rude and Dillinger were interviewed backstage. They said that they will compete next week. Ty Dillinger began to talk, but Rude cut him off. The interviewer had this microphone as they usually do, trying to keep up with who's talking, but it didn't matter. Whoever was talking without the microphone, you heard him perfectly. I really don't know why they have the microphone. Uh, you could hear them without it. I guess it's just to look professional, but why not just have the guys doing the promo look into the camera? It may sound far-fetched, but I think it'll be better off instead of using this fake microphone that obviously doesn't work. They don't need it. The interviewer tried to bring up Sanity, the team they face next week, but Root kind of shook him off and walked away. These two work well together. Um, I do like their dynamic, but I could see Root turning on Dillinger either in the first round if they lose or the second round if they lose to uh, most likely Hideo Itami and Kota Ibushi. Obviously, Bobby Roode's all about himself. He could say that Ty Dillinger held him back. He doesn't need a partner. And that could lead to a match at TakeOver between these two. And that would be a perfect match, glorious match, whatever adjective you want to use. But I think that's, that could be a good way to go to get some sort of um, mid-card 
on the uh, TakeOver special. Dan Matha made his entrance. His head is very tiny. Not as small as the guy from uh, Beetlejuice. He got his head shrunk, but pretty close. He also had like a lot of back knee or something all over his body, kind of distracting as well. As he was getting ready in the ring, Samoa Joe walked out, headbutted him, beat the crap out of him, landed a jump kick. He then grabbed the mic and said, tick-tock, tick-tock, who will be the next to get their head rocked? Is that Goldberg gimmick infringement with who's next? Crowd popped, and he said more of the uh, NXT future will suffer before ending with bring me Nakamura or hand me my NXT title. So, Samoa Joe's still on a rampage at this point. He's not letting uh, anyone go by, and he's putting the whole locker room on notice. And as far as Dan Matha, I kind of like this better than the supposed match they were going to have. Maybe they'll have a match between these two next week, but it kind of puts a damper on this uh, kid's future if they were giving him promos, building him up, and then Samoa Joe kind of just kicks the crap out of him. No Way Jose and Rich Swan were shown backstage. They explained why they decided to team up and ended with a can you handle this No Way Jose chance. We got a final Sanity vignette. Like I mentioned, they are uh, coming in next week. After all of that took place, it led to our main event, The Revival vs. Andrade Cien Amos and Cedric Alexander. Before we get started, I don't know why the tag team champions are in this. They are the champs. They are the best team in NXT. The titles would prove that. I don't know, besides maybe doing this to honor Dusty, that they would compete in this. I don't think a trophy... I guess they are egotistical enough to want the trophy as well. But they got the titles. I think that's more than enough to prove that they're a pretty good tag team. In the match, Cedric did a backflip head scissors on Dawson, and the babyfaces took out the champ, sending him up the uh, ramp. There was this funny spot, the revival, like, pretty much tagged outside, but it obviously didn't count. The ref went after Dash, who tried to get into the ring. Dawson tried to take advantage with the ref's back turn, but Cedric Alexander uh, noticed this and took advantage. Uh, he kind of got the offense on that. I love the revival's intelligence. I mean, obviously it didn't work out here, but just the fact that they're trying to do anything they can to get the advantage and they think they're smart about it and trying to work the system, it just proves that they're one of the best heel teams in WWE today. Uh, the champs went up the ramp. Cedric took him out with a huge dive to the outside, but the revival came back, and at this time they were beating up uh, Almas, targeting his left arm and wrenching and everything as they went to the first commercial break. The attack continued until Cien was able to tag in Cedric. He landed a nice handspring into Gary on uh, Dawson. He had a near fall after a springboard roll-up from the apron. Dash took out Almas from the apron, and then they hit Cedric Alexander with the shatter machine to get the win. After the match, Almas was picking up Cedric, patting him on the back. He then wagged his finger, no, and then started to attack Alexander, tossed him out of the ring, threw him into the ring steps, and that's how the show closed. As for the match, it was a great tag team match. Uh, I like the revival a lot. Cedric Alexander is going to be a big star, whether it's on NXT or uh, Monday Night Raw. I don't know if he'll be able to win the Raw championship, but I could definitely see him contending for it, or at least being in the being mentioned, uh, kind of like how Big Cass was in that four-way. He could definitely reach there. Um, and I love the Andrade Cien Amas heel turn. The crowd wasn't into him. The crowd wasn't buying his gimmick. Um, they were kind of getting bored of his shtick. So turning him heel and giving him a reason they hate uh, him is perfect. And the fact that they had him turn against Cedric, someone who the NXT universe loves, uh, just makes it more uh, that much more impactful um, that they have no reason. Because they kind of cheered the Samoa Joe heel turn. They kind of cheered the Kevin Owens heel turn because it was cool and exciting. They just hate uh, almost at this point that they booed the attack when he uh, went after Alexander and it worked well done NXT booking committee overall it was a great episode of NXT we got the Dusty Rhodes tag team classic underway Joe on a rampage kicking ass and the Rich Swan match was pretty good women's match whatever I, you could skip that if you need to as for next week it's Bobby Roode and Ty Dillinger against Sanity and I'm assuming there's gonna be one more first round matchup they usually do two a week uh, things are finally getting rolling with TakeOver just about a month away. Uh, so we're going to see where that leads uh, in the coming weeks. All right, you can follow me on Twitter at BPIV underscore sports. And rate, review, like, subscribe to the uh, show on YouTube. I post usually every Thursday, sometimes Friday, depending on my schedule. I'll be back with episode 83 next week. Peace.